So here we introduce you the, the eccentric axial loading in a plane of symmetry. And we want to find out here the stress distribution when we have eccentric loading. Eccentric loading it means that the load will not pass through the centroid of the given cross section. For this one we will consider here a vice and if we place a certain job and we will tight it with the help of handle then it will exert a equal and opposite forces on the two support along this line of action. So F is the force here in that case we have F prime will be the reaction exerted on the other side of the handle and this force is exerted on the frame. As far as this area is considered it will exactly pass to the centroid but if you consider here the base of the vice and we want to find out what are the stresses develop in this section here that is this section. In that case we have to shift the force here and we have to analyze the stresses develop at the given section. And let's say suppose here we have a centroid of this cross section which one is a rectangular cross section and if the force is shifted then the force will be shifted as it is plus additional moment will be generated. So as far as the frame of the vice is considered C represents here the centroid, E represents the eccentricity and for this section we are interested to know what is the stresses produced. Since here the this force is not passing to the centroid we have to do the FBD we have to show the action and the reaction at point C and then we have to analyze the stress. So let's consider here one bend bar and let's define the two point here point A and the point B. And let's say we have two forces are passing through the centroid of the given cross section. Let's say this force is equal to the force F and the corresponding force will be equal to F prime. And at the point C here we want to calculate the stresses and this point C from line AB at a eccentric distance equal to E. So E is called as here eccentricity. So as far as point A is considered and point B is considered these two forces F prime and F are passing through the centroid. But since we are interested what type of stresses are developed at point C we will cut this frame at point C. So let's make a cut here and we will show the FBD for A to C. So when you make a cut here you have to show the internal forces. This force here is an external force. So when we consider the FBD for the section AC you have to show the external force as it is that is the force F prime will be acting to the left hand side and passing through point A. C represents here the centroid of the given cross section. Cross section may be rectangular or circular or any other cross section. At this point you have to show the internal forces because we have cut the frame. Now the internal forces will be such that they will balance the sigma fx0 summation of moment equal to 0. Since the force acting at point A is shown is leftward direction. So the internal force at point C will show in a rightward direction and let's say this force is equal to P. As far as the force F prime which is passing through point A will make a moment about the point C in a clockwise sense. So to balance that moment here we will show the moment at point C in an anti-clockwise direction so that the value of sigma moment must be equal to 0. So whenever you have to cut the, any section here then you have to represent the internal reaction this time the force P and M represents here the reaction in the plane of symmetry and now we can find out the value of P and M from the equilibrium equation. The first equation we will apply for conditions of equilibrium is summation of fx and the rightward value is positive. This sum must equal to 0. In this case the P is a positive value and F prime is a negative value. So we have minus of F prime this value must equal to 0. So the internal force P must equal to the external force F prime. There is no force acting in the y direction but the couple is acting. So what we will do we will take the sum of moment of all forces must equal to 0 and we will take the clockwise moment as a positive value. So this time here the force F prime which is passing through point A about C. So we are taking the moment about the point C that will make a clockwise moment. Clockwise means positive value we have force equal to F prime 
and the line of action of f prime and the c the vertical distance is e which one is eccentricity so it is multiplied by eccentricity e here e represents the distance from the centroid to the line of action ab of the force f prime and the m couple is shown in an anticlockwise sense so anticlockwise is negative so we have minus of m equal to 0 so in this case we will get the value of m is same as equal to f prime multiplied by e and now we can investigate here what is the effect of the force p and the effect of the m this value of m is developing a sagging and if it is a sagging it means that we have top is compression bottom is tension and the force p here will develop a normal stress and the normal stress is uniform over the entire cross section so individually we will represent here the normal stress over the section c and the bending moment which one is compression at the top and bottom we have tension because of a sagging effect and we'll superimpose these two stresses and we'll find out resultant stress on the section at cc so once we do the fb analysis then we can find out the value of p and the value of p is same as equal to f prime and the value of m is same as equal to the force f prime and the eccentricity equal to e in this case two type of stresses is produced because we have two type of loading at point c one is a p is a tensile load and therefore the normal tensile stress is produced sigma a is equal to p divided by the cross sectional area and this value you have to take as a positive value and is a uniform distribution over the given cross section so let consider here this one is the section at point c and we'll going to represent the normal tensile stress let the horizontal axis is x axis and the vertical axis is y axis this distribution is uniform over the entire cross section and the magnitude of this stress is p divided by a so this one is a normal stress and this normal stress is sigma a acting along the x direction is same as equal to the force p divided by the cross sectional area a the area can be circular or a rectangular or any area you have to divide by the area plus we have bending stress suppose we assume this time it's a square section or rectangular section then the bending stress will be on the top will be compression and bottom will be in tension and the maximum value of a bending stress here is given as bending moment m multiplied by c divided by i where i is the moment of inertia moment of inertia you have to always look in the perpendicular plane but this one is a variable stress and the stress is maximum on the top and fiber if it is a rectangular section or the circular section or a square section and you have to show the compressive on the top and the tensile at the bottom now it is assumed that the value of sigma a is less than syt as well as the bending stress is also less than sy either syt or either syc and we assume here SYT is same as equal to SYC. So that is our assumption. The stresses are produced within the elastic limit. Now we want to represent here the bending stress distribution. So bending stress is maximum on the top fiber. I don't know the magnitude here. So suppose I assume the magnitude of the bending stress. That is the maximum value is less than sigma A. Clearly you can identify here the length of arrow is less as compared to length of arrow of a normal stress and the stress will go on decreasing as we approaches towards the neutral axis and at neutral axis we have stress equal to zero as we go to the bottom fiber the we have tensile stress is produced and the magnitude of the tensile stress will go on increasing so this one is a stress distribution that is a bending stress distribution so here my assumption is that the value of sigma b that is a bending stress is less than sigma a now this stress is acting due to p and this stress is acting due to moment so you have to superimpose these two value and then you have to draw one more figure for this one you have to apply the saint vinon principle and according to the saint vinon principle we can do the addition of the two stresses if both the stresses are within the elastic limit and even their sum is also within the elastic limit so let's superimpose this now as far as the top fiber is considered we have negative stress here and we have more value of positive stress it means that some positive stress is left here and this value we have calculated as sigma a minus sigma b 
then the magnitude of the normal stress is remain same but we have subtracted the smaller value here so the length of arrow will go on increasing as you move towards the neutral axis the bending stress contribution will go on decreasing and therefore the sum of normal stress plus bending stress contribution will go on increasing so this contribution will go on increasing exactly at the neutral axis here we have bending stress equal to zero so only the normal stress will act so this one is the value of normal stress but if you approach towards the bottom fiber the bending stress has become positive positive and positive you will get here more positive so the contribution of the stress as you approaches towards the bottom fiber will go on increasing and you will get a distribution is something like this this distribution is obtained by using the Venn principle so this value of a normal stress acting along the x direction is obtained by simply the summation of the normal stress which is equal to the positive value is p by a so we have to subtract here the value of bending stress bending stress is same as equal to m multiplied by y divided by i this value will give you maximum value and the maximum value must be less than SYT so this one is maximum value and in general we have bending stress is given as M into Y by I is the moment of inertia where Y represent here the distance of any fiber which is measured with respect to neutral axis so any distance here is Y so this is a one situation and second situation is that the value of the bending stress will exceed than the normal stress let's check it now consider this time we have bending stress sigma b is greater than the value of sigma a that is the maximum value is greater so sigma b max is greater so naturally i have to show here the length of arrow on the top and bottom more than the length of arrow that we are used for axial so let's represent here this one is the magnitude of the bending stress at the top and this one is the magnitude of the maximum value of a bending stress at the bottom so we have assumed here that the maximum value of a bending stress is more as compared to the normal tensile stress. So this one is the distribution of a stress over the section that is the bending stress distribution. And now you have to again apply the principle of superposition. Now we will find out here the resultant stress which one is the superimposed the normal stress and the bending stress. Bending stress is more here as compared to the normal stress so negative value will appear here. And this value of bending stress here at the bottom is positive as well as normal stress also positive. So you have to show first the normal stress length and then you have to add here the bending stress length. So this one is a total value at bottom. So this one is an alternative stress distribution when the bending stress maximum is greater than the axial stress. And this computation again we have done here that this value is more as compared to P by A. So again we are use the same equation we have sigma x that is the stress acting along the x direction is p by a which one is the positive value because of tensile in nature and the bending stress is given as minus m into y divided by i. So in the both the cases here if we overlap the stress whether sigma b less than sigma a or sigma b maximum is greater than sigma a we have a linear distribution but even it is linear it is not a uniform distribution so depending upon the magnitude of the bending stress that is i and i is depend upon the cross section so we can claim here that depending upon the geometry of the cross section and bending moment m is product of p multiplied by e that is the eccentricity the combined stresses here that is the resultant stresses may have the same sign as shown in the first figure or may be positive and negative as shown in the second figure in the second figure here we have this point here where we have the stress acting along the x direction equal to zero if you have a stress acting along the x direction equal to zero so this will be representing here the neutral axis neutral axis is not a centroidal axis neutral axis is at that axis where the, the stress along the x direction equal to zero so exactly here if we draw the line it will representing here a neutral axis so neutral axis here and the centroidal axis so this time we got it as centroidal axis so neutral axis and the centroidal axis are different if the member is subjected to eccentric loading so we write our inference in this fashion we in the second case here 
there will be a line in a section along which we have the stress acting along the x direction equal to 0. This line represents here the neutral axis of the section and this neutral axis does not coincide with the centroidal axis of the section. At centroidal axis here, we have y value is equal to 0. At centroidal axis, we have value of sigma x is not equal to 0. There exists a value of sigma x and the value of y is equal to 0. If we have y is equal to 0, sigma x equal to 0, then only the centroidal axis coincides with the neutral axis. A 30 mm diameter steel rod is formed into a machine part with the shape as shown in the figure. A load of P is equal to 2500 Newton is applied to the end of the part if the allowable normal stress is limited to 40 MPa. What is the maximum eccentricity E that may be used for the part that you have to find out? So in this numerical we have given the value of P is equal to 2500 Newton diameter equal to 30 mm, sigma allowable is equal to 40 MPa. As we have done the theory here, we will cut the section here and if we cut the section and we will draw the FBD for the given section. So this one is the FBD that we have shown here, left represent here one force is equal to P. So this one is the external force is equal to P. In that case the internal force will be same as equal to P and we have value of P is equal to 2500 Newton. This force will develop a tensile stress in the bar at the given section where we have diameter D is equal to 30 mm. The force P above C will make an anti-clockwise moment. So you have to show here a clockwise moment, which one is an internal reaction. So this one is a moment at the given section and this moment is same as P multiplied by the perpendicular distance between the line of action and the point of interest that equal to E. Because of this the bending stress will develop. So here P will develop the tensile stress and the bending moment will develop both the compressive and tensile stress. Since we have a circular cross section the maximum value of the top fiber and bottom fiber will be equal to C is equal to D by 2. Since the axial stress is in tension and the largest possible value is due to the tension in the axial direction and the bending is also tension. So together will be the largest value here. So we have sigma axial plus sigma bending maximum. This value should be less than equal to the allowable value that is sigma allowable. The tensile stress will be simply equal to P divided by A. Bending stress maximum is given as M multiplied by the top fiber distance or bottom fiber distance which is same in the case of circular section divided by I is less than equal to sigma allowable. Here the value of m we can replace as product of p into e. We have value of p is same as equal to 2500. So we have 2500 divided by circular area. So circular area is pi by 4. So 4 will shift in numerator divided by d square. d square is same as equal to 30 square. So this one is the actual stress plus m is replaced as p multiplied by e. We have P is equal to 2500 multiplied by E. Value of C is same as D by 2. That is 30 by 2. So we have 30 and is divided by 2. Further divided by I. We have circular sections. So we have pi by 64. 64 will shift in numerator. Divided by D to the power 4 is 30 to the power 4. This together value is less than sigma allowable equal to 40 megapascal. So we can very well solve this equation and we will get the value of E is less than equal to 38.6 or we can say 38.7 mm. So eccentricity in this case will be 38.7 mm. In that case we will attain the together maximum stress equal to sigma allowable. So that is the maximum value of the eccentricity E. The video you are watching is from the app which is the more class app available on Google store and in this app we will cover all subjects involved in mechanical engineering for gate. Join the course directly from your mobile. The link is given here.